Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm back. This is the... I just did a video for this, and I will post it. Um, I just made this little box. This is... I think I got this at Michael... No, um, Hobby Lobby. And it's made for uh, playing cards or ATCs. And I decided to put this little hummingbird... Um, I guess these are trumpet flowers. I've been Googling, and I'm very tempted to add color to this one, guys. But... I'm going to start with brown. I'm just going to use some burnt umber. And I don't have my brushes. I'll be right back. I'm back. Um, my angle, my trusty angle brush, my water bucket, my palette paper, and a uh, paper towel. I'm going to load my brush. This is how I'm going to do the whole... <coughs> my, I'm not sure if this wood burning thing is affecting my throat or what, but my, I've been having a little bit of congestion in my throat. You know what, it's spring now. Anyway, this is how I load the brush. I corner load, I get the paint on the tip, and then I blend it on my palette paper here. And what happens is now I've taken paint and water and combined them on the palette paper. And now I can get the float comes in where the paint is going to float across the bristles on the water and it gives you a graduation in color. It starts at the darkest to the lightest to just water. I never want paint to get on this side. Sometimes it does. And then you can always use your mop brush. I tend to have a mop as well handy. I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to start putting brown in the darkest areas and then I hit it because there's water on the surface now because I'm putting paint and water on the surface so because that's the case I can soften the color if I need to if I leave it there um, it's okay, but like, see right like that? It already looks kind of like it's floating. But if I just pull on the water's edge, I can pull the color a little further. That's the idea. And I've been doing this for a very long time. And what I do is I keep doing that. I keep going color, water, or water, blot, color, and then go to this uh, palette. And when I reload my brush, so then, all right, let's add some color. Um, in these nooks and crannies is where I want to focus right now. So I'm going to put some up against this uh, vine and just stick it there and I'm just going to tap it. I want to try and keep this, but see I can just go right back to where the water and the paint is and pick up some more and keep it moving. Um, I want to keep it softish you know but I tend to be a heavy hand I say it in every video I have a q-tip at the ready usually as well and I just can take off color if I oh before I paint I always uh, seal the piece because wood is a porous surface and all this paint would just suck right into the wood if I didn't seal it with an acrylic based uh, sealer or varnish either one um, and it creates a barrier then so that my paint kind of sits on top of the piece instead of sucking down into it so I am putting this brown color in the background in the nooks and crannies up against the flowers because I do think and Maddie voted for color um, I actually I've been doing this technique now for a while um, adding color to my wood burnings adding paint to my wood burnings to get them to look burned in, in other words I'm using this brown paint to mimic the way a wood burning piece would look if I were to just use my wood burning tool to shade but I don't know how to do that yet because I'm, I haven't given it a real shot. I just got lazy and liked the dark outlines and then decided to do this instead because I love floating 
and I kind of like the result I'm getting. Instead of it being a half, halfway decent looking wood burning, I get a really nice, I like it anyway, um, because I'm, I've done this technique floating for so many years, I feel like I really have a lot of control and I don't want to do all the wood burning work and then not like the piece because I, I just, I'm not proficient, you know? So it's been, I, I've enjoyed it so far. So who knows? Maybe I will decide to really do the work um, to learn how to get this to look um, shaded with a wood burning tool. But for now, this technique is, it makes me happy. So, you know, it's hard to, to stop doing it and struggle with something that I'm not really good at, you know. So, it's just not happening right now, but that doesn't mean it would never will. But just for today, I am going to uh, use this technique. And so... And then I do think this piece just really, really calls for color. It's just, it's flowers and, and the hummingbird and, you know, so I think it's going to end up getting color. Um, I'll, I'll pause in a minute and I'll show you when I've added color before to pieces. Those of you who watch my channel have seen them, but... Um, some of you may not, and um, it, it is a thing. People do add color to wood burning pieces. It's not new or you know uh, unheard of, but um, I'm a color person anyway. I just love color to begin with. So doing anything monotone is is kind of not my go-to. I I tend to want to add color. Um, I should probably put a little shadow around that too. Um, but right now I'm just sticking it in the real nooks and crannies of the background. I turn my brush so that I keep the water to the outside edge and keep the color up against. That's the idea and that I lost I didn't have as much water on my brush so it didn't but I think it looks good I'm gonna go around that other side the other thing is if I get too crazy I lose all the the raw wood color so I don't like that either um, so in other words like I like that that raw wood color is peeking through but there should be shade there because this little curl so that's all I just have to be gentle and don't, um, see like this would be shaded. I love, so this piece is designed by, her name is B. Locke. Um, I just got her wood burning book, Creative Wood Burning, and um, she had some patterns in there. And I just figured, I, this actually fit this box too. That was part of it. Um, the reason I chose it because it, it just fit perfectly on this box and I struggle still with designing um, I've been a decorative painter for so long and I'm just so used to using other people's designs that it doesn't come to me naturally to know what to put down when I have a blank canvas in front of me it's it's not easy I like having a pattern I like you know, it's a lot more um, serenity for me to just come in here and be like, oh, I know exactly what goes here and where and why and what colors and all that. So this is a leaf. I'm tempted to put a little here, but I don't think I'm going to. But I think I should. I have two more spots I want to do. And then I'm going to go around the hummingbird. So I want to take it easy here. Okay. I'm going to go on this side of the swirl and then I'm going to pull it
this is trumpet flower right here this is a big petal so and then it, it bumps into the leaf so I think then I just want to put a little bit on the outside of this trumpet flower and then I'm going to go around the hummingbird so let me just gently really right up against it and just let it let it peter out I don't want to pull that color up too high all right I think that's good hmm so now if I'm adding color I am not coloring in the whole flower at all. I'm just going to put touches of green. Let me go around the, okay. And then on these little things, I could either, there's two things, I could just go up against the box with the brown and leave the vine kind of raw, but I tend to think I want to do it. I think this is what I want to do. I'm going to show you. I want to go, I'm going to go under the vine. I'm not going to go over the leaves. I could have done this with the, I did take that, it has screws. I took it off when I burned it. But for some reason I tend to not mind when I'm painting. I just go around it like that <clears throat> because now what do I do with the stuff above it I think I'm just gonna go to the right um, hmm I really just think this is aesthetics or if I don't know if that, that's the right word, but I don't think it has to be some like specific. I can do what I want, you know? Like I think it needs to have color right here. So I'm just hit and missing it. Hit and missing it and you know, it is what it is. I think that looks good. I just don't, my total intention, and it it is my intention, doesn't mean it's going to be the way it is at all, is to not lose all the raw wood color, you know. So, but one, you know, I think it's going to be good right now. I'm going to go around the hummingbird. <sighs> Same thing. I just want to keep it darkest up against the hummingbird and let it bleed out. So I'm going to go right here and right here and right here. And I could kind of just go all the way along the wing and all the way. Oh my gosh. I'm going to do it. I just don't want to lose like I keep saying. I'm, I'm like a broken record right now repeating myself. I think if the more I say it, <laughs> chances are I'll do it because it's in my head. Um, me, I don't want to lose all the <laughs> raw wood color. It should be inside this swirly. And inside the swirly. Oh boy. Yeesh. Um, I just got to go around there. Pretty much once I do it, it, I won't be able to get it off. So that's why I'm just being very cautious and careful. And I'm going to start by putting my brush up against and then I pivot it out. See how I'm pivoting? Mm, I don't want to get it on the bird. 
need a little more water. I can feel when my brush starts to get dry. You really need to have water in your brush to get the paint to move. So, all right, I could go under the wing and I think I probably should. I'm just gonna keep it really light. But there would be, what it does is it just sits the bird onto the piece so he's not just well he is floating in the middle in the middle of midair I think I like that I don't want to now I could do corners so here I'm gonna grab this other piece that I added color to right here compared to this piece that I did not except for the um, the the dragonfly and by color I mean red orange yellow green blue those colors because I I do add white and gold and then for the dragonfly I just put the an iridescent or a um, metallic or a pearl on the wings to give it the shimmer but for the most part I really just stick with browns and I did add soft black on this one so I added the soft black along the edges. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that. I'll 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 make it a couple colors. Um, but see, I did not do any green on the leaves or anything. I just highlighted the petals with white, and then I put gold, you know, here and there as highlights, like on his little body. Now on this one, I did kind of what I'm doing on here. I I shaded everywhere I wanted shaded Well, I shaded the little tree branches and then I began adding color so I shaded in well I don't know I think I did the color first to be honest with you so it, it, it's a little bit of color but I'm trying to stick with the browns the golds and the whites it's just hard um, so for this one I'm gonna keep there's so many different colors of trumpet flowers as well. Like this is my own whimsical design, so I could do what I wanted. This one is more realistic, so there's a little more pressure for me to kind of keep it realistic. Not that being said, I don't have to. Like it's my piece. I can do what I want. Um, so obviously leaves are green, but so is the hummingbird. Now should I use the same color green for both? Right now I have this light avocado out. Hmm. Also, um, sometimes hummingbirds look iridescent to me and I do have iridescent greens. So I was thinking of giving them a little red, like this is what I looked at beforehand. Again, designing is not my thing, but like these are all the trumpet flowers. I just Googled it. These are actually the poisonous variety. But you could, I could just do a touch of color around the, the, tr the top of the trumpet and then keep the base real basic. Um, like here's more of a drawn one and it has the dark green inside and white. See, I kind of like that, keeping them white. I think I'm gonna do that. It just keeps me from adding another color to the piece. So this piece will tend to be just green white green and white and brown like so I kind of like that now this is a picture that I oops I screenshot a picture of a hummingbird um, that I liked and the way she drew it I kind of was considering this part right here to be the red part but it seems like the red goes right up to his eye so this would be the red so it's not a truly realistic drawing. It's just her drawing, you know. So many decisions. <laughs> I'm going to go in with some green now. And I think I'm going to use this light avocado. I think it's a pretty color. So let me go back to where I was with the trumpet flower. If I use this kind of depiction of an angel trumpet, which I like, that makes me happy. The white and then I'll put green maybe I'm going to use two different color greens I think that makes sense 
because if I'm shading with green, I'm going to need it to be. So I have a light avocado. Maybe I'll use dark avocado. You know, um, let's see, because they're in the same family. I have Hauser dark green and Hauser medium green. And Hauser, is this Hauser light? Hauser dark. And Hauser, I think I'm going to use these two. And then the trumpet flowers will be white, but I'm just going to lightly shade in areas, and then I'm going to do all the leaves this dark green. Then I'll do it. This is my choice. I'm choosing to do this. This is what I'm doing. All right, I'm putting some dark green out. This is Hauser dark green. Now, I think with to not lose all of the wood tone, wood grain, or the grain color, I'm going to do my leaves first. And I'm just going to do them, I think I'm going to stick with just down the vein lines. I'm going to move to a little bit smaller brush just so I don't get paint everywhere because I want to, like I said, I keep repeating myself, but I want to keep it more controlled. I hope I like this color. Let's see what it looks like. I like it. There's so many colors I could use, you guys. I'll be right back. Yep, I like it. All right, I'm bringing it down, and this is going to be it. Now, without repeating myself too much, I don't want to lose all of the wood tone color, so I am going to keep this only in certain places. So up against the vein line. I'm going to do both sides of each leaf. So that way I leave the outside edge of the leaf um, the raw wood color. Kind of making it like a highlight. That's my that's what I'm saying. I'm sticking to it. Um, I'm happy. I do like the tone of this green. I like it. And I like that the, the see, because I'm not a color mixer. Um, being a decorative artist, I've always used these uh, craft paints. And, you know, they're pre colors, <laughs> they're pre designed colors. So I don't know about tone and all that as much as or someone who took a color a color theory class. So now that I'm using Hauser Dark and Hauser Medium, I'm a medium, I'm assuming they're in the same family and that they'll play nice together. So I like that. That's what kind of made my decision stick. I was like, mm, I don't want to grab colors just because I like them and then they they don't play together nicely. Um taking this a little too seriously, don't you think? It's not supposed to be serious. It would also be dark up against this side because there's a shot there would be a shadow cast by the, the flower being on top of the leaf. So in other words, I'm gonna go up the center and then across the top too, because that flower is overlapping the leaf. So there's a couple places where that happens. Then I'm going to add a little more color. A little too much though. Sometimes I can scrub it off a little. Yeah, I can lighten it up. Um, and So let's see. I'll figure out what I'm going to do with the vine, but for right now, that is all the big leaves. This one has, this one's underneath this, so. 
I'm going to do, um, I think I will do all of these leaves that color too. But the light green is what I'm going to use to shade the trumpet flowers because in that picture, you know, I think the green bleeds out of the vine into the white petals. So I'm going to use the medium Hauser green to do that. And then I'm going to pop the uh, tips and edges of the petals of the leaf, of the flowers with the white. Actually, I'm using light ivory. I'm not going to go full-blown white. Um, that was just a spur-of-the-moment decision as well. So I'm going to keep this really light. And so what I'm going to do is just underneath the petals here, where the little neck of the trumpet, oops, that had a blurp a blurp in it. Now this is actually green so I need to paint those green I forgot. And right here because it would be shaded that's kind of like the inside of that petal I'm gonna do up against that and then I'll tip everything with white and I don't know if these greens are playing nice. I really don't, but I'm going for it now. It's too late. Um, right here. Uh, right here. Probably in here. I'm going to do it inside. I don't know. I didn't get a good view of like what the center of the flower looks like, but I'm going to put it green. Oops. And I'm just using the, the tip of the brush. This isn't, that's not the way that's meant to be used, but you can do it. Okay. Up against this. Um, maybe, yeah, definitely. You know what really is like, a fun part of this process too is when I add the varnish the project just it shines it has a sheen to it that's so gorge so I'm just gonna put it here even I mean it's kind of making the flowers look green they're not green but when I add the white it'll it'll suffer it'll suffice I'm gonna put some green here because that's the pet uh the trumpety part and then I have to go back to that darker green because I want to paint the these little attachment things. The bud holder John thing. Um, and then I think I'm going to do him green. He's got a white belly for sure. So just a little hint of green. I want to look at the picture again and see um, this isn't a good picture because I want to see him in flight to see what see it kind of looks like his wing feathers are brown so I'm gonna put a hummingbird h-u-m-m-i-n-g oh come on man And then you just go to images, and I'll see a bunch of different, oh, look, and there's a watercolored one. So you can do whatever you want. But like that, his wings are open, but they're going in the different direction. But they're kind of more white. So I'm just going to make the green go on top of his body and leave white on the edges. So I think I, think I know what I'm going to do, and I think it'll look pretty. See, here's one getting a drink. I love it. Oh my gosh, I get so excited. So I'm just going to put, and they're iridescent, but I'm just going to go with, I'm going to put the green right up against the top. I don't feel like that's sliding too well. And a little bit um, on the top of the wing right here. 
And the inside, I don't know what the inside would be. I'm just going to put a little shade right here to give it. And <clears throat> I am going to put a little bit of red. Oh, gosh. So this would be white. All right. I like it. I think it's playing. And I'm not losing too much of the um, wood tone. I'm going to go back to that darker green and make those little bud things, the bud holder things, the dark green right here. You could, instead of floating, um, you could probably do this as, as a wash as well. Like, it's just a sheer wet coat of paint. I'm not making it opaque. That's what I'm trying to do because I, I need to have a light touch. Um, I don't want to lose that it's a wood burn piece. That's the whole idea. Um, you know, because I could just base coat it in and it would be whatever that looked like, but um, that's not my intention. I'm trying to make it stay like looking like a wood burn piece. And if you haven't figured that out yet, I, and I'm all kidding, because I'm just repeating myself so much. Um, geez, because I think I need to paint the vine. I do, I think I do. Um, I'm going to do, this trumpet flower has, it would be this color right here. And I should at least shade up against, I know what I'll do. Instead of doing the whole vine, I'm going to do just where it crosses out over and under things. So in other words, this where it attaches to this flower and then where it attaches to here and here. See this is the, a part of this. And where that goes under. And then maybe I'll put a little gold places. See this needs to be the light green right here because this bud is on top of this petal. I didn't do inside this little guy. I'm just using this side of my brush. Um, and maybe I'll do Am I still zoomed in? Yeah. Like, you can tell that this petal is kind of getting overlapped as well. Like, in a few places. And then, trust me, when I put the, the white, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great, I think. <laughs> I want this to be green in the, in the middle. I shouldn't be using my brush like that because it's not what you're supposed to do. Um... Go back to the dark green, and anywhere that vine is, so right here it would be dark, right here, here, Joe just got his second shot. Uh, his COVID vaccine. I got my first one. And I go back April, like something or other. So yeah, so just where they connected, where all those vines connect. Oh, here's some more right here. Hold on. This is connected here. And this part right here connects and it overlaps. I could use a liner brush for this, actually. I'm gonna just get a little bit of that green and just put it right where it overlaps. 
Um, it's not watery enough. Alright, I think it's going to be good. Um, I found one more place. I'm always finding another place, but right here, Kirby wants to go in the basement because Matt is working out. Um, this needs to go here. Kirby, no, no. All right, I'm going to get my white. I'll be right back. All right, you guys, I'm so, I'm getting excited. I am going to add, so I went around and made sure I put green in all the dark places on the flowers. I'm going to add the white, but I'm going to add gold to the tendril things. So I'm just going to hit the tips. Let me come in. Because um, this is what makes my pieces my pieces, is adding little special hints of, Sarah. <laughs> uh, in other words, I just, I love bling and I can't, I can't, oh my God. But you know what happens? I got to find, I really, really love the satin varnish that I've been using, but I do think that I lose some of the metallic gets lost in the, um, in the not shimmer because the satin doesn't have a really it doesn't have like a shimmer to it but it's um it has a satin finish so maybe I'm gonna have to find some matte varnish oh my god I just love adding this so much so just in the really highlighted areas of the tendrils so not everywhere just where it, maybe it bends, definitely on the twisty turny parts. So like right here, this bend, whoop, oops. And I really don't want to get it in the burn line, like inside the brown, so maybe I could touch that up with. But oh, it makes me happy. And it's so subtle. Um, and I still haven't added the white, so just wait until it starts popping um, right around that bend. And that kind of got all up in the burn marks because it's I just burned it too tight. I forgive me. So maybe a little bit here. Gotta get a little bit more. Maybe water it down a tiny bit. But right here. Right here. I think, oh, it's so tempting to put it everywhere. All right, I gotta get this, it's my hubby. Be right back. All right. Now remember, I said I wasn't going to use white. I'm just going to use light ivory. All right. I'll start with that. But man, I'm getting so excited. Just adding that gold. Anyway, we're having pizza. That was Joe. He's stopping at Domino's. We never get Domino's, but where he had to go to get his shot. Ooh, see, I need to put a little green right here. Anyway. Um, but yeah, this is making me so happy. Okay, so right there. All right, now guess what? It's time for white. Like I said, not white, white. I'm using light ivory. And if it's not popping enough, I'll break the white out. So we'll see. Definitely, I'm going to zoom in. Not too zoomy, but right here. Oh, yeah. Remember, these are white flowers, so this would be shaded. Mm, dang it. It's all right. I forgive me. You know what? The shade police are not coming over. I won't let them in if they attempt to come in here. Oh, my gosh. All right. I'm 
kind of liking the light ivory. It's more, it's subtle, but it's, it's bright enough. Like it's not, it's, I think it's doing what I hope to do. That looks white. It looks whitish green. Oh, so happy. Oh my God, it makes me so happy. It would be white up here. Why are you girls in here all turned up? That doesn't have enough white. Oh, you found a bead. Did you find a bead? Kirby is so funny. You found a bead, huh? I just want to keep it on the edge of the petal that is like the brightest and let so that it looks dimensional, right? Try not to get the paint in the burns. If I do, there's a couple ways to go. I can rub it with the Q-tip and see if I get it off or I can just go in with my liner brush and the brown and fill the, fill in the the little um ridge you know the wood burned area so I fixed it before this little bud let's pop these buds look another bud somewhere right here um so I'm pretty good over here um, let's do this guy. I'll just do them in order as I go from right to left-ish. See if that works. I start to have too much color because I can't see the white as well on my palette. I have, I end up with like a lot on my brush so wonder rinse and start again I think there's actually something called gray palette paper so that you can see white on it isn't that interesting you won't be able to see your gray if you're painting with gray um, let's do this guy see what we can do here I want it on those outside petals, but it would be shaded, so it is what it is. So much... Sorry, the dogs are getting a little turnt. So this right here. I tend to be like a little kind of like a pity pat situation. I'm just sticking the color right at that tip and then really just trying to keep it the brightest up at the tip. And then I am not looking at the oh god thank you so much I'm in the I'm in the shot because I am so loving this you guys it's really making me happy one more so look the other ones you can tell I added the white and this one I didn't man it looks good dude very happy very very happy I am not a good singer. I wish I could sing because I would be belting out. I would be going to karaoke once a week. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like it would be so much fun to be able to sing. And have people enjoy it, not just me. 
Um, what am I doing this one? I'm getting texted and I feel it. My haptic, my hapticker on my watch is hapticking me. Dude, it's amazing. I added green to the leaves on there. What am I going to do with my with my homie? I got to put the red on his little... Alright, I have this red. It's iridescent. There's a little black mark right there that's really bugging me. You know what I could do? I could put a little... It, it dulled it down. It dulled it down. Um, Alright, I'm going to put out this red. Now this is called Ruby by DecoArt Extreme Sheen. And it's a metallic. And I just need a smidge. And I am going to go right up under his eye. Instead of that little space there, I'm going to go right up under his eye. because that's And it looks really pink. But it's called Ruby. We'll see what happens. I'm just going to let it bleed down too because it, it the red does go further down. I think that's all I need. It's not as... Um, all right, I am in love. Now, here's a really big decision I have to make. I kind of want to put color up here. And I think I can do it with just the brown and it would look good. I think I'm going to use the brown. I'm going to show you too because I didn't put any here of the brown. I just think if I go in with the uh, soft black... I might overdo what I've accomplished. So I'm going to do it in the corner right here. Just put a little bit and just tuck it. Tuck it up against. It didn't tuck very well. Oh no, I had green on my finger. I'm going to just use a butt wipe and try to get that off. Well, I got the green off. But see, every time I was blotting the, um, the green paint areas, I had green. So I'll go over it. I softened it out. It's okay. Um, but I do think it needs to have a little something going around the edge. And I'm just going to do it gently. Make sure I have enough water on my brush and that'll keep it moving. For some reason it's kind of sticking. When I sprayed it with the acrylic spray, maybe I didn't hit that spot too well. But I think it needed that. Now I'm just doing the finessing, like the little finishing touches, you know, of where I think I need shading and stuff so this is just the pity patty stuff I think I want to go on this side of the curl too and I think I'm gonna end up see this is my little brush too that's the other reason I'm gonna end up putting it a little bit more on this side of the beak good I don't think I lost you know like this kind of seems like it should be shaded a little more but I think I'm good so I'm what I've decided to do <clears throat> hmm I was gonna see I think I could be done I want to add a little bit of white 
to the hummingbird too. That's what I forgot to do. Under his belly. And I'm back to the bigger brush, so who knows what will happen here. But I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to go... I could do like each uh, part of the feather. That's plenty. I can see it. And then the other one as well, and probably up against his little body there, it would be white. His eye, the inner, the inner, not the black part, but the the whites of his eye have to do. And I would think it was a boy because I think the boys are the ones that have that pretty red. Um, the ruby throated. And then the girls are just a little bit less colorful. I think that's all I need to do. Um... So I am going to pop some in to the eye, and I'm going to paint the eye in a little bit too. It should be black. I just burned it. Um, I could put a little white dip dot there too. So I, I could just take a little white dot. I kind of want to pop them a little better. I can hear the robins outside. It's rainy here and I think that's when they love to look for worms. I think he's beautiful. Oh my god. I love it. Um, Too many brushes in there. I think I'm done you guys. I'm going to go around the box, the bottom. I think I'm good. I'm not, I don't think I am, because I could have just gone like this. On the side, I'm going to do it and see what you think. I do like that look, but I think it gets, it's too dark. I did it on my other little one, I think. See, I kind of like the way I went around the vine. It gives it a little movement. Ugh, can't decide. I think I'm done. I like it. I don't want to get too crazy. Like the gold, I want to add gold everywhere now. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I could put little like gold dots in the middle of the flowers. See, I'm just pushing it now though. I think I'm done. All right, you guys. That's it. Thanks for watching.